Hi, my name's Jeff, and I'm going to go through some packs I've been putting together the last couple of months. Um, as far as my skill level goes, I'm no prepper or uh, bushcrafter, but I grew up in the 70s camping with my parents, and in the 80s and 90s as a young adult, I've done a fair amount of backcountry hiking. So I had some skill set to start with, but for a recent adventure to the high pine countries in eastern Oregon, where we were going to be about 5,000 feet in October, cold weather was going to be the norm. So I wanted to plan ahead and refresh some of my skills, and so I watched a bunch of YouTube videos to put together survival type packs, and this is what I put together. Also working with a pretty tight budget, um, a lot of this stuff is either stuff I've gathered over the years or recently picked up as cheap as possible. For my all day carry in camp, this is an old cell phone case that I had strapped to my belt, ferro rod, glow stick, waterproof matches with a striker wrapped up in a plastic bag small fishing kit, not too big a deal on the fishing kit, but it's supposed to be in everybody's survival kit. I'm not sure I'm really going to carry that, but there's plastic worms, hooks, sinkers, a couple of little floaties, and about 50 feet of monofilament on a wood screw. You put it in the drill, use a slow speed, you can wind up a whole bunch of string on a small little deal. Uh, water purification tablets that include um, duct tape wrapped around it. That's good for all kinds of stuff, including first aid. Um, got uh, wet fire and a couple of Vaseline cotton balls, gauze pads, bandages, small whistle and flashlight. Uh, I had another small cell phone case with this uh, donut full of paracord that I had on my belt. Um, this donut trick is, uh, I believe, JJ showed me how to do that on YouTube. I'm going to link to all my favorite YouTube guys in the description. They're all worth checking out. Uh, for a knife, I picked a, a Gerber. I think it's about a four, a little more than a four inch blade. It's a full tang. It was pretty cheap. Probably cost me 30 bucks. Uh, next, I want to get a high carbon blade, not stainless steel. Probably go with a Mora Black. So this can either go in the pack or be carried by itself. It's a used belt pouch that I found in a second hand store. Five bucks. Pretty big, carry a lot of stuff. Compass, headlamp, Sharpie, uh, first aid ointments, creams, uh, sterilizing wipes, uh, a sew kit that came from a hotel stay, so there's some needles, threads, buttons, and safety pins in there, a little bar of soap for hygiene, especially if you are cleaning a wound. Um, my glasses are pretty important to me, so I had this little kit with some screws, a screwdriver, and a magnifying glass. Potentially a fire started there with a magnifying glass. One of those cheap cable saws. They're really not worth much, but I had it, so I threw it in there. And uh, a signal mirror. And these are instruction books for compass and first aid that can help refresh you if need be. In the main pouch, my fire kit. Uh, primitive fire skills is something I've been practicing with uh, ferro rods and found materials only, so that's a lot of fun. Uh, waterproof matches and dry cotton balls, Vaseline cotton balls. Lighter. Uh, clear ones are best so that you can see what's in them. This one happens to be refillable with a small LED flashlight in the bottom, kind of neat. No more expensive than a regular Bic lighter. Jute twine for uh, unraveling into uh, a tinder ball or use this twine if necessary. This magnesium starter, uh, they're a little flaky, but I had it. There's more twine wrapped around that and duct tape. If you take the duct tape and turn it inside out where the sticky side is out and you put your shavings on there, they won't blow away in the wind. And there's also a small section of hacksaw blade in there for the shaving part. Uh, Crick and Stony on another website page showed me showed us how to make these uh, fatwood sticks. So I cut up some sticks, melted some pine pitch into the uh, bottom of this tin, soaked them up, took them out and dried them individually, put them back in. They all had real good uh, stuff to a fire, and then a couple of wet fire tabs. That's pretty good stuff. Um, this is a pack towel that somebody had given me as a stocking stuffer. It's uh, actual cloth, pretty lightweight. Wash it, reuse it again. 
some more stocking stuffer gifts that people have given me over the years. Some of these disposable uh, towels that fold up into a little bit of a pill. Uh, you can do all your, uh, anything you would want to do with a, a bandana. And a small thing of uh, hiking tissue. So there's at least one dose of toilet paper there. Uh, these tarps are pretty neat from Walmart. They're five by seven. They're under 10 bucks. Pretty sturdy material. Five by seven's a little small to be going out as a dedicated tarp camper, but you can definitely make a one-person A-frame or a lean-to for getting out of a temporary downfall or rainfall. Part of the first aid stuff, uh, some pain relievers, anti-diarrheals, and a few other pills. Ace bandage is good for not only its intended uses of sprains and strains, but it can be used to attach gauze to unwieldy places. If you have a gauze pad, head wounds, you can tie that on there. Uh, as far as the space blanket, this one's actually bag-shaped, like a bivy bag. Another little fishing kit, uh, once again, I might take that out. A few odds and ends in this little pouch, a Smith's knife sharpener, it's got carbide, ceramic, these, and then a rod for serrated blades, a couple of glow sticks. Tiny little pocket knife. It happens to be a K-Bar brand, by the way. <laughs> this little blade and a teeny little flashlight that's got a cord so you could affix it to something if necessary. Glow stick and a pencil with duct tape. First aid, all the things you can use duct tape for. Also, first aid related, I went ahead and put together more than just band-aids. There's some pretty big gauze pads in here, uh, five by nine inches for scalp lacerations and bigger things. A few other pads and then various band-aids including knuckle and finger band-aids. Uh, I got a couple of bars in there, food bars in there as well. So once again, this can be carried by itself. I usually carry it in this if we're gonna go farther. Just happens to be some more toilet paper. Everybody likes the Baco folding saws and stuff, but I happen to have this one in my gardening kit. It locks closed and open and it works pretty well. Once again, the budget, that's what I had, so that's what I used. Uh, I recently picked up a Mora, and it's to light my fire with the ferro rod built in. This one's stainless, uh, which makes it good for if you're going to be around the water and you can't take care of a carbon blade. This pack can hold quite a bit more than this, so if you were going to make a real 72-hour bug-out bag, you could have more food, clothing layers, and such. I've just been using these bottles. I used to carry two of those liter bottles. They're pretty sturdy plastic and should last, you know, I've used that one several times. This is my food bag. I've got the MSR pocket rocket. Had this for about 10 years for backpacking and such. Screws onto your butane canister. I think I paid 30 bucks for it all those years ago and that's about what they're going for now. I've got one mountain house meal. This is a pretty neat uh, cook put cup from GSI. I think they're about 25 bucks. It's got the cozy, so that if you're making a cup of tea, you can drink it. The lid is usable upside down for heating, and then it's a sippy lid. Comes with this folding spork. It's a little short, but it works. There's a lighter. A small butane can fits inside, and this cup holder has a little magnet on there, so you can put that in. And in the front pouch of this one, I've got uh, some oatmeal and some tea bags. And then also have a plastic spork, it's a little taller, fits into those meal house bags, uh, mountain house bags a little better. And this is a neat little stand that uh, Crick and Stoney pointed out. The butane canister fits on there, a lot more stable. Once again on the budget deal, this is an old hatchet, came from my grandpa's shop. Uh, you know, wood axes are a little better, you know, something that's about as long as your forearm. But I had this and uh, it's sharp now. Better than nothing. Uh, for connectors, uh, strings and such, I usually carry, well I've got, like I said, this big chunk of paracord, but if you're going to be using it a lot, you don't want to have to cut every time. So these are four foot lengths. I've got half a dozen of those for uh, guy lines when you're putting your tarp into A-frame. 
Um, another old folding knife that I had in my collection. Shove that in there too. And then in here, I took some other paracord and cut it into 12 foot lengths. I've got like six of those in there, so that's a pretty good chunk. A few other connectors. I've got some teeny bungee cords and some carabiners and some buckle straps that I had laying around in case you need to affix anything to the outside of your pack. This is a small lightweight sleeping bag. It's only rated at 46 degrees, so you wouldn't want to take it out and spend the night in too cold a weather by itself. But a combination of this and that bivy bag space blanket is going to be regular, better than just a space blanket if you're up cuddled under a tree somewhere. This tarp's not big enough to really make a shelter out of. It's just a little bit bigger in sleeping bag width and length. But it's pretty sturdy, and so ground cover, and one side of it is silver. So that's about it on that one. Um, got an 11-year-old grandson who's been interested in doing all this stuff too. He enjoys going out and making fire with ferro sticks. So we put together a kit for him as well. Uh, spork and bars for food. Um, I didn't want to spend another. 50 bucks putting together a real backpack stove. You know, I'm gonna try and put together a few kits so that it is kind of a bug out deal for the different members of the family. This one's got a uh, Esbit style solid fuel thing. They're only a few bucks. And uh, it might take two tablets to get water boiling, but it works, I've tried it a few times. And then this is a piece of heavy foil from a, a bake pan that I cut up for a wind blower. couple more mountain house. This is a uh, camping cup that I happen to already have and a cup of noodles that when we go out for our day practice things that makes a handy lunch for the kid. He's got his own belt, a small hatchet that his other grandpa made and then uh, I gave him this Mora. It's the classic number two. Small, it'd make a good secondary blade in anybody's kit and it fits his small hands quite well. That one is high carbon. Picked him up this canteen and cup. Not too thrilled. I'm not sure if I would get another one, but it was pretty cheap at the surplus store. And that uh, cup works well enough to make your food. And the mountain house. It's another one of those tarps. Uh, we quite often get gifts from people. Um, this last Christmas, we both got these pre-made emergency kits, and they're a good place to start. I uh, usually add or subtract things as they, whatever, so this one actually came with a couple more of those towels, signal mirror, some more of that cord that's wrapped up that I did, a bug net, you know, but it's small, so I kept it in there, for you, go over your head. This cord came with it, it's not paracord, but uh, it was there. Came with some glow sticks, magnesium striker, space blanket, and a poncho. There was a few other things in there too. Uh, that may be in other bits of the kit. Uh, similar first aid stuff, gauze, band-aids, duct tape, ace bandage, bandana, and some garbage bags. And along the way, idea of making multiple bags for multiple members of the family. That backpack was used as well, a couple of bucks. So is this day pack, Goodwill, under $10. So this one could be in conjunction with another pack same sort of first aid kit, tarp, and similar uh, stuff from one of the pre-made kits. Uh, these headlamps are only like five bucks. Matches, cotton balls, another magnesium striker. It came with this uh, compass that's got a whistle and a thermometer. So, budget-wise, it all went together pretty cheap. Um, anybody has any suggestions or comments, please Make sure to leave them, and I will make a put the links into some of my favorite YouTube channels where I got a lot of this information from. Thanks.